Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 15th and right now we are looking at the Langley Coastal Doppler Radar here. You can see all the showers out across Pacific Ocean pushing into the coastal areas here. Got some heavy rainfall embedded there, a slug of rainfall moving across Olympia. If we check out the Camano Island Doppler Radar, you can see some moderate heavy rain embedded here as well across Snohomish County, King County, Snohomish County line. There's a flash flood watch up near portions of Highway 2 where the Bolt Creek fire was, so watch out for that. You might want to skip that Highway 2 drive today if you can avoid it. Looking across Southwest BC, already had some heavier showers and a few lightning strikes associated with that activity as well. Reoccurring theme for today, but not everybody is going to see a thunderstorm here. Some places are going to see more rain than others, and it just depends on where you are today. Eyes on the sky for sure. We're going to go over some of those details as we get through the video here as we go through this morning. Taking a look here at Portland Doppler radar, you can see you got plentiful showers down there as well. So let's go Go ahead and take a look at the infrared satellite imagery. This is the cold air we've been talking about here for the last few days. You can see the cumulonimbus clouds embedded here in the showery activity here. Lightning strikes will be possible as we go through the day today. Now looking at the visible satellite, you can see it, once it gets over land here, you start to increase the friction on some of these clouds here and it spreads out a bit more. But if we can get some sun breaks here, you could increase the, the instability here across some of Western Washington, Oregon, Southwest BC, but it's going to be hard to come by. You can see we got a lot of showers and clouds to go out there so it might be few and far between trying to get a sun break out here but we do have some interesting signals showing up for thunderstorm potential as we go through the day today more on that here in a moment I also wanted to point this out, flash flood watch, debris flow prone here near the Bolt Creek fire where it was. And this is Highway 2. You can see Bering, Grotto, Skykomish, and, you know, have your uh, wits about you. If you are out and about in this area here, we'll monitor a possible flash flood warning. Stay tuned to local TV, radio, or other reliable sources for weather information. The National Weather Service, not a bad place to be checking in with today. You can watch your local Doppler radar out here as well to see if they do you know, bring a lot of rainfall across this area. We could be looking at some debris flows. Taking a look here at the day one thunderstorm outlook does include Portland, Seattle, and Spokane here, just as scheduled, what we've been talking about, and this would include British Columbia as well. Now, gusty winds today. Check it out. Ellensburg, 45. Tri-Cities, 40. Walla Walla, 45. Pullman, you can see Lewiston, 40. Spokane, 40. Wilbur, 45 miles per hour. Secure your loose objects. You can see these are coming out of the west and then turning southwest towards Spokane. This is looking at Saturday afternoon chance for thunderstorms. Again, Spokane National Weather Service. Higher chances here across northeast Washington, Idaho, Panhandle, and for portions west of the Cascades. Cannot rule out a lightning strike here, though, for some portions of the eastern Washington. Also, check that out. Seattle checking in at 46. 6% chance. Infrequent lightning, small hail, brief downpours, and some gusty winds are the main threats. And also, pretty cold air mass moving over us here. Frosty Saturday night into Sunday morning, especially across the higher terrain. Hopefully, everybody that is out and about here on a camping trip or the hikers across the backcountry, hopefully you are aware of this cold air that is moving into the area here. And you can see the low temperature Saturday night. Look at this. Some of the higher terrain getting down into the 30s here. Some of the higher peaks might be even down to the 20s. So pretty darn right chilly out there. If we take a look at SeaTac, 64 degrees yesterday at 7 degrees below normal here. We averaged 71 at this time of year. So we've been below average for a few days now, at least the last, what, four days here. Not picking much precipitation. Trying to gonna add to that bucket here as we go through the next few days. We're not that far behind for the month of June, but we can dry out pretty quick at this time of year as well. But the weather models do show potential for additional systems as we go through the end of the month. Here's Bellingham here, 67, the average high for yesterday, June 14th and we hit 63 here. We're not going to get to that average high again today with all this cloud cover and shower activity though. This is out towards Hoquiam, Washington. 57 yesterday, 63 the average high for this time of year. And you can see uh, back on mm, June 2nd there, 1.87 inches of rain there on the 2nd. That is a daily record high there. So interesting stuff already above average so far for the month of June precipitation wise. Now taking a look at 500 mil bars, 18,000 feet. I'd like to give you these visual diagrams of what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere here and you can see this cold air aloft really rolling across the area this hangs on with us all the way on in through sunday you can see the back side of the slope swinging through as we go through monday morning but still having that chilly air mass here all the way on in through monday afternoon could kick off some showers here across the pacific northwest including thunderstorm potential on monday and finally we're going to try to get rid of this as we slowly modify aloft as we go through tuesday afternoon 
we look at the height resolution models, this is at 10,000 feet, 700 millibars, and you can clearly see this lobe of cold air right over the top of us and the backside of that lobe sliding through as we go through the day Sunday. And that's going to have thunderstorm potential with it as well across some portions of southwest Washington, some of western Oregon here as this pivots across the area. Now, let's take a look at what the European, as of last night, is calling for lightning flash density potential. So as we scroll through the morning hours, you notice the threat increases once we move towards the late morning and the afternoon hours. And we've already had a couple lightning strikes again across southwest BC as well. Can't roll out one here in the next couple hours right along the coastal areas also. And as we scroll through this afternoon, you can kind of see how this hit and miss nature of this basically Portland north across western Washington, northeast Washington, and British Columbia, Idaho Panhandle, portions of the Alberta Rockies. Western Montana cannot rule out thunderstorm activity as we go through the day today, but that threat should be wrapping up as we go through the nighttime hours. But then as we scroll through Sunday and we saw that cold air aloft still hanging around, you can see some of the showery activity here could pop off a storm or two as well. And then we scroll through Monday and this threat's going to eventually start to slide east as we go through Monday afternoon, eastern Washington, maybe the Blue Mountains there. As we go through Monday, we'll scroll all the way on in through Tuesday afternoon here also. And yes, yeah, still going to have this cold air around so we might pop off a few showers with that and speaking of lightning this weather station here that i've been pushing here for the last year or so it highly recommended it's got a lightning detection system with it it's got a great smartphone app you can click on any of these individual parameters and it builds graphs for you stores all the data for you in the cloud highly recommend this station even builds a forecast for your own home here and this is what it looks like very attractive unit all solar powered haptic rain gauge ultrasonic anemometer um, yeah, I'm enjoying the station very much. So now taking a look at the North American model, this is three kilometer resolution. I've zoomed in here on the Puget Sound because I want to kind of show you the Puget Sound convergence zone activity going on today. This is 80 meter wind speed. And as I put this into motion, you can see that Shahalo Gap flow going here, these southwest winds, and they kind of die off here in the lee of the Olympic Mountains here as we go through the late morning hours. And you can kind of see this northerly, northwesterly surge push down the Puget Sound here. So you could get some interesting convergence zone activity along where that convergence meets. And then it turns back suddenly again and we're going to drag this convergent zone probably on into the cascades as we go through the evening hours as well but yeah a very raw brisk day out there thunderstorm potential some gusty winds out there at times and then as we go through sunday you can still see as we go through Sunday afternoon, the Chehalis Gap is still going there. And we got the northerlies moving down the Puget Sound. So the threat is going to shift a little bit further south across some of southwest Washington and down towards some portions of Oregon. You can see the westerly surging down the Strait of Juan de Fuca as we go through tomorrow as well. Now, taking a look at surface-based CAPE, this is convective available potential energy. You can think of it as a thunderstorm fuel. So as we go through the day today, you can just kind of see the atmosphere destabilize, especially west of the Cascades here as we go through the day today. And again, that's why we're going to be dealing with this thunderstorm threat. This is just kind of showing you the difference between the temperatures at the surface and the temperatures aloft. You get that cold air aloft and these parcels of air can rise more freely and you get that convection out there that can cause these thunderstorms. Now, if we look at the high resolution rapid refresh run here, so you can see it's picking up on these showers pretty well here as we move through the morning. This would be about 11 a.m. There's noon and you can see some of these showers forming in the Snohomish King County line there off back towards uh, Port Townsend, the Hood Canal Bridge area. And you can see see some of these stronger showers here might be packing a little bit of a punch with some lightning potential in those and the convergent zone kind of continues on as we go through the evening even into the nighttime hours there across some of the cascades here so anybody off in the back country there could be in for a long night and then we continue on in through Sunday and you'll see some of these showers again pop up. You can't roll a couple of lightning strikes with this activity here as well and we go towards Monday and we're gonna have another day of showers here across the region. If you look at the North American model, it does show something similar here. And it does show this thunderstorm activity here, potentially across some areas, you know, again, out towards the Hood Canal Bridge and the Olympic Peninsula there, Kitsap Peninsula. Can't roll out some of that activity here. And you can see the thunderstorm activity moving around as we go through the day today. And then we go through Sunday. It does kick off a few showers as well. And we're going to scroll off towards Monday where we have one more round of showers potentially. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the European, we're already dealing with the cold air aloft here. And you can see as we go through 
to this afternoon. The trough is overhead here, keeping us, you know, very raw and windy and it's got some showers out there. And again, across the backcountry, just want to point that out. Don't want anybody to miss this here. Uh, hopefully you're already prepared for that activity, but it's going to be pretty cool up there for the next few days. And then we scroll all the way on and through Wednesday and we start to get that break here coming up. Maybe a few showers kick off Wednesday afternoon across the higher terrain, but then Thursday we dry off a bit more here as well. And then we hopefully warm up a little bit as we go towards next week and more on that here in a moment. But also pointing this out, total snow couture ratio, you, know, you can kind of see Stevens Pass there as we go through this afternoon and evening. It continues to pile up some of the snow across the higher peaks there as we go through tonight into tomorrow morning. So again, just a heads up for that. Now, if we look at apparent temperature, this takes wind chill into account. And as we go through the day today, you can see not much relief there across the mountains. It's going to be pretty raw and chilly. And as we go through tomorrow morning, look at some of these temperatures, the wind chill, even down towards the, some of the high teens there. And then as we scroll on in through Sunday, we warm up a little bit more. But, you know, Monday morning is not going to be a lot better. It's still pretty raw across the mountains. Tuesday morning, also kind of a similar scenario. But then we start to warm up a bit here as we go on into the mid and the end portions of the next week coming up. Taking a look at the GFS. So this is two meter temperature anomaly. This is the system we're dealing with right now. That cold air aloft overhead. You can see it hanging out with us all the way almost to midweek here. And then we do bounce these temperatures back as we go towards the end of the week coming up. But models have been pointing at yet another system as we go towards the end of June here for some of the West Coast and North America. So that's something that we'll be watching closely here over the next few days as well. And June, you know, can be kind of gloomy here and kind of chilly across the Pacific Northwest. You know, sometimes those summer temperatures don't really kick in until we get on into July. Taking a look at the European artificial intelligence, there's a system we're dealing with now. The trough hangs out for a few days and it's not even showing much of a ridge building here, maybe a day or two warming up before the next system moves into western BC here, keeping that onshore flow going, and then maybe a, another trough here as we go towards the end of June. And we scroll off towards the end of June, you can see multiple systems trying to swing through the Pacific Northwest, but take that with a grain of salt at that range. The GFS, a little bit different here. You can see the trough kind of hanging out here. And then as we go through the end of the week, it does try to build this ridge a little bit here. Here we go through Thursday and Friday and kind of see this transient ridge punching up into the Pacific Northwest here. It keeps that system a little bit further north here. So we may warm up here. We'll see who's right between the European and the GFS. But then eventually the GFS gives in and swings this next trough as we go on into the later portion of June there as well. Now looking at the European, this is yesterday afternoon. As you can see the suppressed temperature with our trough currently that we're dealing with there. And then you can see these temperatures really start to ramp up here as we go towards the end of the week here. So we'll see how that turns out. We'll be watching that closely. This is Seattle Tacoma calling for some shower activity right around a quarter of an inch, maybe two tenths of an inch to three tenths of an inch here coming up. Not a washout for some areas. Definitely a little bit rainier further north as you go towards a pain field. Everett and a little bit further east here, you could be dealing with some areas that get, you know, in excess of an inch or maybe close to two inches of rainfall where some of that convergent zone activity is setting up. This is Portland International. You can see the showers for the next few days as well. You go a little bit further south towards Eugene and drier amounts showing up. Here's the six to 10 day as we go June 20th through 24th there. You can see the above average signal there for the West Coast, near normal and kind of a below average signal here for some portions of Oregon as well. And this was issued actually yesterday here. But again, with these gusty winds and not a lot of precipitation falling east of the Cascades, or you can still start some of these fires here at this time of year. So heads up for that. There is still some elevated and some moderate risk areas out there for today. But anyway, yeah, I may go out there and chase some of this stuff here. I don't know if I'm going to go out towards Gig Harbor and the Hood Canal area out there and try to hunt for a thunderstorm or not, or if I will stay home. I have a pretty decent view from my house and I might want to watch the convergence zone moving across the area here. I might set up a little bit further north. I'm still not sure what I'm going to be doing. Also looking for the first dust devil chase of the year here. It looks like maybe something coming up Wednesday. I'm looking for light winds and clear skies in eastern Washington, Ritzville, Washington, the dust devil capital of the world. I'm working on a little documentary about that as well. I'm going to go there and try to interview some local people. So if you are out there in Ritzville, I know I have some viewers out there. Go ahead and give me a, a contact or leave a contact in the comments here and I would be grateful if I could meet up with you and do a little do a little interview about dust devils and just what it means to live out there in Ritzville, big farming community out there as well. 
the no-till farming going on there. They try to keep the dust down and not tear up the fields too much when the crops are done. They try to leave it in the ground here because some of these dust devils get really big and really strong. And that's with the no-till farming. I can't imagine the time where you would just kind of strip the field bare and leave you know, more of that uh, free dust out there and just allow it to heat up. There must have been some monster dust devils back in, you know, before the no-till farming really took effect there across a lot of the areas. So anyway, yeah, um, I'll be looking forward to that. But yeah, eyes on the sky today. You can clearly see all the showers out there. Some thunderstorm activity will be rolling in here. I might go out there and try to hunt some of that activity, maybe go back and forth on a ferry or something like that and try to capture some cool cloudscapes out there across the Pacific Northwest. But anyway, I hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.